everybody. Gonna be doing a little boat maintenance today and thought I'd bring you along. And um, we're gonna be going over a couple little things today. But uh, what I am gonna be doing today is gonna be changing the oil in both of my main engines and the generator. I've already dewaterized that. And we're gonna be actually, most likely gonna be taking that generator out of this boat this year and uh, the reason is is because the fact that it is a Westerbeek 8.5 kW generator and that is a huge generator for this boat and according to the manufacturer under full load that has a gas usage of 1.10 gallons per hour well we don't need a generator that big for this boat and what I'm going to be uh, doing is actually most likely going to be downgrading through to a 3000 kW generator slash inverter and the reason is because of the fact that that uh, inverter generator gets tremendous amount more fuel economy I should say per hour of usage um, like I said this one here gets 1.1 gallons per hour at full output from the 8.5 kW and i'm assuming i mean typically we'll probably use that generator at its capacity around probably half of that so it's still going to be using close to 0.75 gallons of gas per hour versus a 3000 kw generator slash inverter which should be able to run around 11 to 12 hours for two gallons in that 11 to 12 hour of usage so as you can see there's a huge difference in fuel economy versus this generator versus the newer generator slash inverter and what i'm gonna probably do is actually put a 55 gallon fresh water tank in its place so that's going to increase our fresh water capacity on this boat and the generator that I'm going to be getting is going to be going up on the flybridge. So, um, anyhow, that's kind of future plans. Can going to be taking you through that process. Um, this generator's only got like 600 and I think 74 hours on it. And Western Beak, I called them and asked them, say, hey, uh, what's the life expectancy of this generator that I have? And they're saying 10,000 hours is the life expectancy as long as you've got good maintenance. And this one does. So... I'm most likely gonna be selling that unit <clears throat> sometime this winter or in the springtime and uh, so anyhow we've got the uh, engine hatches open today and uh, we're gonna be taking you through the process of doing oil changes here we go so uh, anyhow I did pick up a new oil extracting pump I got this off of Amazon it comes with all of the different hoses and fittings and everything else that you're gonna need and it's 12 volt driven and uh, it's got a pretty decent little uh, uh, cable here it's got a flexible cable that you can stretch so we're gonna be uh, using this today and the part number is gonna be down in the description link below just click on it it's gonna be uh, an Amazon part if you got prime free shipping so it's pretty cool so anyhow we're gonna be getting these engines started up here and uh, we're gonna do the starboard engine first we're going to get that one warmed up and i'm going to go down and open up the uh, through hole valves and get some water flowing and uh, let's just warm up for a little bit
going to bring this one up to operating temperature before we start sucking out the oil. And uh, that way the pump won't have any issues taking her out. And uh, get everything ready to go. All right, so we've got the engine up to operating temperature. We're sitting right at around the 140, 145 degrees. And uh, I'm going to go up here and shut this engine off and uh, we'll take the dipstick out and see if this thing can go ahead and pump out some oil. Slide that down your dipstick tube. Just about where it hits, and uh, we'll turn this pump on and see what happens. So it's pumping away. This is the first time I've done an oil change on this engine here since uh, we've had the boat, so I don't know exactly how much oil, but uh, according to some online information, it's saying around six quarts for the port, uh, pan, about a quart for the filter, but they said it could vary up to eight quarts depending upon the angle of the engine when sitting in your boat, so I guess we'll find out here in a few minutes how many quarts it holds. So we've got all the oil pumped out, and... Uh, this right here was super handy. The oil filter is located back on the back side over there with, um, if you guys will look at my videos, there used to be a settee that's set right here, and now we just have a small couch that we can slide in and out. And what's really nice is I can actually open up this engine hatch. Before, you had to dismantle everything, uh, the couch, had to unscrew a bunch of screws to get all that out. Now, with that gone, thank goodness, um, you can easily have access to oil filter on the backside, which is phenomenal. So, anyhow, we'll uh, put some oil in here and uh, get this thing restarted. All right, so I'm just about done with the uh, oil changes here on both of my main engines. And I'm going to show you a little something that I've installed. So here was the existing uh, additional oil pressure gauge down in the engine room. And then, of course, you know, we've got one up on the main helm and then um, on the flybridge as well. But what I did was um, those typically have like a nylon uh, line that feeds that style of gauge. And these get pretty brittle over time. And if you was to bump this for some reason, you can actually crack it and you've got pretty good oil leak. So what I'm doing is I'm doing away with the tube fed gauge that sits right there. And all I did was I bought an additional gauge just like this. It's a just a regular pressure gauge. It screws right into the the block that this uh, right here screwed into. And it was just a really easy um, additional fix. And then that way I don't have to worry about too many leaks on either this brittle hose because it is getting uh, pretty hard and not flexible. And all I have to do is worry about the uh, the threads on the back of this gauge leaking, which I put uh, some Teflon tape on. So just a little addition. That way when you're down the engine room, uh, you can verify you've got good pressure. And then also, if you're having some issues with maybe one of your gauges on your helm, you can come down the engine room and check this one out. So anyhow, thought I'd add that uh, to the little maintenance that we're doing today. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video.